Hey everybody, welcome to Nightmares, anyone. I'm Richard, I'm the host of the channel, and today, uh, yeah, it's kind of late. It's, uh, yeah, it's almost, it's about 3.30 here, so the sun is almost down. Bruce is actually making huge chocolate chip toffee cookies from scratch. So, before I get into today's, uh video, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be opening some book mail and some merch mail. Come back after the intro. Hey everybody, welcome back, it's me Richard. So, uh, yes, as you guys can tell, I've got a long sleeve shirt on. It, uh, it is getting cold here. It's getting down in the 30s at nighttime. I'm drinking dark, dark, dark chocolate caramel apple coffee. It's so good, you guys. Uh, yeah, so. About three weeks ago, I did an interview with uh, Solomon Petchers. And Solomon Petchers uh, is a YA horror author. He is the author of Ghost in the Attic and the Feaster books and uh, Cullen. Well, Cullen is a new release, and that's what we did the video for. And I had ordered some merchandise from uh, Solomon. Uh, on the Redbubble site. Now, this has nothing to do with Solomon as a person. It's not Solomon's fault. That was a month ago, almost a month ago. I still haven't gotten my merchandise. I got one piece about a week ago. I just haven't opened it yet because I thought I would get it all at the same time. Now they told me uh, my Cullen coffee mugs like the one that Solomon had in the video, and I'll pop up a link right here to that video, right there. Uh, yeah, Solomon had one, and I really, really wanted one, and I wanted to uh, uh, give a couple away as Christmas gifts. And uh, yeah, they're not gonna be here now in time. I got an email from Red Bubble the other day still saying they'll be here between November 29th and December 8th. Yeah, not happy. Not happy with Redbubble. I would never order anything from them again. Uh, yeah, they uh, they said, oh, we're so sorry about the merchandise. You know, we'll give you a free replacement. Free replacement? I didn't even get the first one. So I kept asking for my money back. They wouldn't give me my money back. They just said, you know, we'll, we'll send another one. We'll send two more replacement ones free of charge. Well, whatever that means. So... Let's get into uh, opening this, and uh, I do know what this is, um, so I'm using my little ceramic cutter, let's open this, yeah, this is from yeah, Red Bubble. I would never use one again. <laughs> Solomon said he was really... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say what Solomon said. That's not my... So, wow, this looks like a little baby, uh, 
I hope this is adult size. Supposed to be. That is my ghost in the attic t-shirt. Wow, and this thing is really super, super see-through. This is super, super thin. It said heavyweight cotton t-shirt. Uh, hopefully... size they sent. Gotta put my readers on. God, we say it's a bitch getting old. They, did, they sent me a large instead of an extra large. Well, I'm not dealing with them again. Hopefully, uh, well, I don't know. Wow, that's really super paper thin. Yeah, it said it was 100% cotton. It's 50% polyester, 20% cotton, 25% rayon. Yeah, won't be dealing with red bubble again. That's a, that's a big disappointment. Uh, yeah, big disappointment. So, this other one, I know what's in this one too. So, a couple videos back, or it might be my last video back, I discovered a movie called The Banishing. And, uh, uh, oh, I should show you, show you guys my little light up. Zero, let me turn off the light. Let's turn that one off. Let's turn this one off. See, there's my little light up zero. He blinks too, and then the, the, the little uh, pumpkin on his nose blinks on and off. Yeah, so I discovered a movie called The Banishing, and um, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And then uh, I had heard from somebody that it was based on a true story. So I did. I looked up uh, the truth, the real building and haunting uh, that the movie The Banishing is based on. And there's a character in the movie that is one of the creepiest looking men ever since the creepy, creepy commercial for uh, one of the health, you know, those local health there's a creepy commercial. I'll, I'll try to put the link up here so you guys can see the commercial. Tell me if the commercial isn't creepy to you, too. Um, but anyway, I did a search for Borley, the Borley, uh, the Borley Church or Borley, and a couple books came up. Well, like I said, there's a character in the movie. His name is Harry East, and he's the creepiest, creepiest man. But uh, he was a real person, and he's the one who wrote this. So I am going to open this. Yeah, I wanted to open this last week uh, when I did the movie, but I thought I would open all this stuff together. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, so this book, The story of Bor Borley Rectory, the most haunted house in England by Harry Price. That's his name, Harry Price, not Harry East. I said Harry East. But this is a picture of the actual building. And as you can see, there's a body right there up in the window. And um, whoo, this has got some tiny, 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 tiny print. Uh, Oh, wow. It's one of these books that has, um, what do they call that? Letters and um, all that. Appendixes and uh, Appendix A, Appendix B. I hate reading books like that. Shoot, if I would have known that. Oh, wow. I'm kind of disappointed in this. I was hoping. Oh, I hate this when they do this stuff in books. Yeah, I was hoping... But anyway, it says the most haunted house in England. Borley Rectory was the house that gained infamy as the most haunted house in England after its 10-year-long paranormal investigation by the psychic researcher Harry Price. Price dedicated his life to uncovering the truth behind the paranormal. 
leading him to become one of the most well-known psychical, and that's what it says, psychical, <laughs> psychical researchers of all time. It was his investigation into Borley Rectory, which by far became the most famous case in Price's long career, eventually leading to the Victorian house being crowned the most haunted in England. This book is a reprint of Price's original 1940s publication documenting his 10-year investigation into exploring the nature of paranormal phenomena surrounding Borley Rectory. The rectory was attributed to classic poltergeist activity, wall writing, mysterious fires, and supernatural manifestations. Most notable of these is that the figure of a nun, known for walking across the garden, also appearing was a spectral carriage and team of horses driven by a headless coachman. It could be said that the story of Borley Rectory is as much a story of a haunted house and ghosts as it, as it is about the living. Borley's saga includes sensationalist tabloid headlines, a scandalous affair, and a captivating investigator whose discoveries are still questioned to this day. Now, it was claimed in the movie that uh, Harry Price was an occultist. Now, uh, there's some really cool pictures in here. Yeah. So those look like completely different buildings, but they're not. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it says first published 1940. Wow, there's some pretty cool pictures in here, actually. But, oh my God, the print of this book is so tiny. Oh yeah, the stream in the garden, the nun's walk facing large summer house that shows where she is seen walking. Um, yeah. I'm actually excited to read this. Uh, the more I've read up on this haunting in, uh, on the internet. Oh, wow. Spectral writing. These are actual copies. Um, wow, this actually looks pretty cool. So... It, it, it'll probably read like a documentary is filmed. Um, there's 190 pages in it. And it's considered, con considered, oh my God, listen to me, considered uh, nonfiction. 10 years investigation of Borley Rectory by Harry Price with illustrations and copies of spectral writings. There's a preface in here. Uh, yeah, so that is the book. Um, I, I've gotten a couple other books uh, in the mail that uh, I need to open. Um, what am I reading? Uh, I'm, I just finished Geek Love. I listened to the audiobook. I had never read the book. I had been asked, or I, I'd been told for years and years and years from many friends, you got to read this book. You got to read this book. Um, I will put a link down below in the basement to my Goodreads review of this book. I made it very short, um, but that's going to be my next review. I did finish, I just listened to that. Um, I'm almost done with The Seventh Child by Owen Brooks. Um, it's a book from the 70s, late 70s, early 80s. It was a very slow burn. I got like 50 more pages. Yes, I'm still reading it. Um, I am listening to, oh no, I'm, I'm reading the ebook of Ed. Um, very disturbing book. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And uh, you guys, if you haven't done so already, and if you love horror, if you love to be scared, just love to read anything, um, uh, just make sure you hit that subscription button right there. No, my last video, oh my God, how could I forget this? My last video was, uh, oh, Sarah's gonna start blinking, I think. Um, yeah, that's weird, he just turned off. <laughs> that's weird. That's weird, because it has a brand new battery, and so I know it's not the battery. <laughs> but, yeah, my last video was uh, a live chat with uh, Jerry Roth. How could I forget that? We had a blast, you guys. We had so much fun. Uh, a lot of you tuned in, asked Jerry some pretty cool questions. Uh, we had a blast, actually, and then Jerry and I started talking about... <laughs> 
what Jerry calls a vintage horror movie. Yeah, Jerry calls uh, <laughs> the, the movies from the 80s and 90s vintage, whereas my vintage horror movies were the black and white <laughs> horror movies from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. <laughs> yeah, we had a blast. We could have gone for hours because we started talking about taglines from movie posters of horror movies. And oh my God, you guys, I'm going to do another one with him really, really soon. We want to do another one where we just talk about uh, scary movies and just stupid horror stuff that uh, scared us <laughs> when we were younger. So uh, yeah, look for that. Um, look for another uh, upcoming live chat with A. Lopez Jr. Because the last one, I just totally just screwed up my last one with him and I feel feel really bad feel really bad about that and uh, yeah him and I are going to do another one he's the author of the books like Purgatory and Night Dreams and uh, I had sent him the diamond painting of the cover of his Purgatory book so uh, yeah look for that we're going to be doing that pretty soon really really soon actually I want to get that done before Christmas time uh, but speaking of holidays everybody that's here in America if you, if you celebrate it or not uh, have a wonderful Thanksgiving on Thursday. Don't eat too much because it just makes you miserable afterwards. Um, I know it does me, and I just, uh, I just, I, I feel horrible. But uh, yeah, that's my. Uh, this is my experience with Redbubble. Um, for as expensive as they were, um, I, I really wish uh, Solomon had all of his artwork and merchandise on another company because I, there were a couple. Uh, really cool um, tote book bags and stuff that I would love to order, but I'm not going to go through Redbubble again. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, um, there's a lot of really, really, really scary movies coming out. I do want to kind of, I, I, I do, um, well, I, you know what, I'll talk about this in the next video, but I've got to uh, wrap this one up. It's getting dark out in a uh, I smell fresh baked chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. And Bruce puts chocolate chips. He puts uh, chocolate chunks, big, huge, dark chocolate chunks in there. He breaks up Heath toffee bars, and then he puts in Rice Krispies, so they're chewy and really just, oh, oh my God. You guys, it, it it's just like, uh, it's like, yeah, it's like heaven. <laughs> they're just so good. So you guys take care. Once again, I'm Richard. As I say all the time, be kind to people. Don't be a bully. It's not worth it. Um, stay scared. Pick up a good scary book. Watch a good scary movie. Have great nightmares. Yeah, nightmares aren't great, but uh, <laughs> lately I know because I haven't gotten any sleep. Um, yeah, I've just been in tons of pain with the shoulder and my hip and my knee. Oh, I don't know. Uh, what else? Yeah, so just just stay scared, you guys. Pick up a good scary book. But happy nightmares. And as always, <laughs> I'll see you in the next one, you guys. Stay out of Borley Rectory. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading this. I, I know I'll probably never read it just because of the format, but I do have a copy. Um, it just looks interesting. In fact, I do want to watch the the banishing again and there are a lot of videos and uh things on youtube uh, about borley rectory yeah look it up there's tons and tons of videos i know uh, my friend christy ordered the book i don't know if she's got hers yet or not but uh um so i just wanted to you know shout out to all my crushes b Adriana, Christy, Tammy, and Larry, uh, you guys, I think about you. You guys make me laugh. Uh, you're, you're a big part of <laughs> my, uh, my horror little circle of uh, friends through here. So you guys, take care of yourselves. Stay scared. Yeah, I'm, I'm slurping. I slurp, not slurping, but slurring because I have my retainers in. So uh, stay scared, you guys. I'll see you later. Bye.